I don't know what was happening where like somehow heretics was behind, but it looked like they could win. And then Evie just started <laughs> trolling actually during the game. Like I, it's very rare where you can tell that a player is trolling, but I think zero 11 and five is, is the point where we can be like, yeah, he's, he's just trolling <laughs> the game. So, Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Power Spike. It's everyone's favorite tennis coach that your mom loves, Digon, along with Monty and Dom. These that was that was this week's top comment. It was Digon, Digon's Digon's cucking your dad is what is what I'm getting at here. <laughs> I'm more like loving your mom, you know. You know, it's two peas. <laughs> okay. you know, two peas in the pot. <laughs> that is the Digon. Approach he's loving there. your mom not cucking your dad okay yeah. that's that's how it goes You're just scaring your mother <laughs> if your brother, everyone yeah. wins uh there yeah you if you if you got if you if you guys have been watching on twitch sorry about the delay if you're watching on youtube you didn't get any delay because it kind of came out at the normal time hopefully unless there is a delay in which case i apologize we had some technical a peripheral difficulty actually much like the lec that prevented <laughs> me from watching many of the games live this weekend because i unlike dom I'm not going to sit there for hours and hours staring at a delay of game screen. Yeah. Hey, right, would you? Would you if you got if you got the fucking bag for it though? Of course I would. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the way you made it sound. I don't like... blame you. I'm just saying, like, without getting the bag, I'm not. I'm not sitting there watching somebody's mouse not work. I'm. I'm. I'm very happy for you, Dom, that you get paid a lot of money to watch someone's mouse not work. That's that's a great job. Look, I mean, I don't know where the delays came from. The commissioner of LEC tweeted out that uh, they fixed the problem that was causing all the delays. So I was really surprised when finally we got hit with delays again, like every other fucking day of LEC that we've had for the entire year. It was really strange to me. Yeah. I miss Max. Wasn't Ma isn't Max like that? Wasn't Max the old uh, the commissioner for the LEC? Yep. Um, you know. Once, once they said, "Oh, just kidding, we're not taking the neon money," then it was all over. We don't have these prolonged fake uh, solutions uh, <laughs> being put in place. Yeah, neon probably would have fixed the peripheral problems. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there would be hey, repercussions for uh, <laughs> people that <laughs> did not uh, get the tech working correctly. Yikes. I'll say that. Yikes, dude! <laughs> yeah, <Yikes. laughs> it's, get, it's getting dark. It's getting yeah. dark. There, there needs to be uh, repercussions um, for one of our squads letting uh, heretics get the win today. Uh, Mad Lions, not looking so good. We're, it, what, what is going on, man? Every time, every time uh, heretics gets a win, Dom gets closer and closer to having heart attack, y'all. Like, what, what is going on here? Well, how is heretics winning? I mean, uh, no one knows. Ruby Ruby actually showed up, played the game well today, and then Yankos just completely went fucking shoulder deep in El Yoya. It was crazy what we witnessed. Like, <laughs> shoulder. Pretty much, if, if Yankos does not just fist the other player into the next dimension, I don't know how Heretics can win. <laughs> Uh, well, we're I mean, Mad Lions is. also did their classic thing of, you know, do something good and then immediately double down and do something twice as bad right after doing something good, which was a, a hallmark of their their play from the winter split. Yeah, they they I don't know. They they just don't. It's interesting to see who's carrying over from last last split, the winter split and who isn't after two weeks and only one week left of this regular split of uh, the spring season here for the LEC. Uh, an another team struggling. Koi, right? Not exactly where we thought they would be, especially after that last game. Fanatic, man. Two and four. Fate right. back in their all hands. Right, right. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So Koi, Koi's entire issue has been having a, like, just a god-awful early game and then trying to claw their way back into relevance through mid and, la mid and late game uh, decision making, but also Malrong is just a giant millstone around their neck right now. And I say this as we talked about in the show as a Malrong lover, okay? Uh, but if I'm coy, I was going to put this out there. Maybe I don't draft a team composition with Lee Sin, Twisted Fate, and Callista that is predicated off of getting and snowballing early leads when I know that I've been losing every single early game and then I can't even scale into the late game. Maybe I don't make that call. Maybe I don't draft like that. Maybe Fair. the call is, hey, we're playing like one of the worst teams in the league and 
here's a chance for us to practice. That. Yeah. <laughs> they tried to do the uh, the hundred thieves, the the hundred thieves original strategy where they're like, "Fuck!" Like we lose early game every time. Let's draft three <laughs> winning lanes, and then they actually just lost the three winning lanes. Are like, yep. actually let's have Scion split the map level one so that our bot lane could farm, and then they they got over it. So this is just a progression <laughs> of koi. <laughs> so they're going to turn into. I mean, we'll get into hundred thieves. So I, I assume that the eventual final form of koi will be Shigenda going back to playing top side, weak side top lane with, you know, Scion and Gragas, right? And then they wait like 100 Thieves does. They just sit there, group as five in a death ball, wait for the enemy team to make a mistake, and then win the game. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's working. It's actually so sad that this is working for 100 Thieves, but it is. Yeah, no, I think that, that that it will work though. This is like this is something that I was on for like three weeks. You know, I've been I've been talking about this for for weeks now. Where it's like, please just draft Zyrocon and make your team fight easy because no team, like even even teams around the world, like even the teams that are supposed to be some of the best in EU, like Vitality, like no one can actually play these type of team comps where you're supposed to like space and you're supposed to like win lane and then control like objectives, control choke points and, and win like that. Everyone just wants to have buttons to fight with. So yeah, you just need to draft buttons where you can press them and then win a team fight instead of like the having to react rolls. to what the other team does. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, watching hundred thieves on their win streak in North America, which we'll get to, I, I have a hard time disagreeing. I have a hard time disagreeing. Uh, we we spent a little bit of time on the the bottom of the table teams here for the LEC. Let's let's focus on the top, which is also a jumble. This this LEC standings are jumbles. No one only on one win. So there's no the team that we thought would be the pathetic teams in Fnatic and Heretics now find themselves at two wins and have their playoff hopes in their hands. But you got G two SK, BDS, and Vitality. Vitality with two two losses after a really fun win against SK. Uh, a big yeah, but Vitality has an ex Vitality has an extremely easy week against Koi, Heretics, and BDS next week. Although BDS is at four and two as well, I think BDS's mid and late game has been pretty suspect. And Vitality, look, they lost a couple. They lost a couple uh, this week, and I think the G two loss was disappointing in that. They didn't like I didn't like their composition with the Camille and the Aurelian soul. I felt I feel like you really have to have a robust front line and a pushing bot lane in order to activate Aurelian soul. First off, the pushing bot lane to get him through the laning phase. And then secondly, to do the consistent DPS, I think you actually do need a, a more traditional front to back team fighting composition. So the Camille left me with a lot of questions. But even when Vitality had opportunities to win that game, Bo was trying to engage instead of kiting back a lot of the time, which I felt was going to be a much more effective way for them to team fight. And then when we saw the match against Astralis, I feel like felt like in that match, Astralis actually did have the kind of team composition with the Scion up front that you want with the Aurelian Soul. And Astralis has been, I think, pretty solid overall. I think with Vitality, too, they were not able to execute on the strong 2v2 they had in mid with Lissandra and Vi to get picks early on, and that left them in a in a pretty big hole. But in spite of everything, Vitality still almost won that game because you see their strengths. Like, Perks is actually making plays. He's trying to teleport uh, behind to clean up these fights. Um, you know, they're making cross-map plays to get bounty gold when they're down. Like, their sense of macro is still very good. Like, I like their shot calling and, and their objective control on the map. Tom? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, these games, it's, it's very hard to, to judge them. I think Vitality played really like i don't know i think Bo played really bad in the last two games but then yeah. again like he was playing really well at this point last split and they ended up like beating uh g2 in their first meeting and it didn't mean anything anyway it's like once you're qualified you're qualified i'm pretty sure four wins every team that's four wins will probably qualify i don't think that there's a realistic possibility that none of the teams that are under them either go like zero three or one two like it seems like all the well, especially teams... because their schedule is easier so it seems really yeah. unlikely that that happens so it's like for all the, the teams i mean i think that the way that the lec format works is you know it gets hype quicker and there's always stuff that matters but what matters is not when the top teams play each other in the best of one here what matters is like who's actually going to get fucking eliminated like is is heretics mm -hmm. like xl fanatic who is actually gonna uh, lose out here and not make it to the best of three stage uh, the only thing that you really care about here is like what the draft of teams ends up being because you could be 
you could be nine and zero, but if the other teams that are supposed to be good end up, you know, in the middle of the pack, like you just might end up with with a really stacked group. And that's the worry is if you end up with like three teams that end up being the strongest teams all on the same side of the bracket in the group stage. Yeah, I think that's really the only major concern. But even then, it's still you still have six teams going through and it is a double elimination in the next stage. So it it doesn't feel super bad. Yeah. Yeah. Taking a peek here uh, right now, Astralis and Koi, both three and three are one of these teams. Well, one of these teams going to be the ones that don't make it through. Well, it's like four teams that move on, right? Four or teams. What do you Sorry, mean by I misspoke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of these yes. two teams that don't make it to the playoffs. That That's what I mean. To not even to the playoffs, to the uh, what is the terminology to the groups? groups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, it's 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 it doesn't Astralis. really matter what happens with all the top teams. I know people are like kind of scared because G2 is not looking as dominant as they were looking earlier, or people are like upset about uh, Vitality dropping games. Look, Vitality was the best team in the group stage last or in the um, the the spring season stage last time and they ended up completely bombing out in playoffs all that matters is that you end up getting to the next stage and that you actually are able to perform when you know uh, when when you, this stage activates like do you have drafts that make sense do you have a team identity because last time what happened to vitality is they got there and they thought they had a team identity they tried to play like the kate lux lanes to like win bot lane with like carry junglers and they were going to like play pushing lanes and then activate bow and he was going to be carrying the games and that shit didn't work so then they had to fall back and like everything just fell to shit so I don't really care too much about like the top teams, them them winning or losing these games. I mean, it's just best of ones anyway. As long as you get to four wins, you probably should move on. I think it's very rare that you get to four wins that you don't move on. So yeah, uh, it's fine uh, what we end up with here. All right. Predictions real quick. Who are the two teams that don't make it? It's hard. I think you have to look at strength of schedule. Um Astralis plays Fnatic, XL, and Heretics, so might have a relatively easy, easier schedule. Yeah. Um, Fnatic plays Astralis, G2, and Mad Lions, so that feels like it still could be pretty dangerous because I don't think they're going to get the same kind of draft that they just pulled off against Koi. And I think Koi has a lot of weaknesses within their own right, so people are probably overvaluing Koi right now because of their history as rogue, but actually watching Koi right now is a pretty miserable experience when they have such a weak point in their early game and they can't seem to figure out how to get it. Like, arguably, Koi shouldn't have gotten a lot of the wins that they've gotten so far this year just by virtue of them miraculously coming back uh, in the late game. Like, it, ne it never feels like they really have a great deal of control. Um, so, I mean, I think Fnatic could easily kind of go oh three next week but mad lions is g2 sk and fanatic so yeah. it might come down to like fanatic versus mad lions for the last slot i mean i feel like that's a realistic option on the final day of competition to see what happens heretics is almost certainly out because they play sk astralis or they play sk vitality and astralis so i think i think heretics is done and then xl plays bds astralis and koi so I guess I'd give a little bit of an up to XL because I think those are some potentially winnable games for them. I will say Mad Lions and Heretics. I will say Mad wow. Lions and Heretics. What oh, a no. fall. What a fall from the last year's uh, finalist. <laughs> Just because of strength of schedule. But I do think that Fnatic versus Mad Lions may, in fact, be the game that decides which team is in and out, which is the second to last game on Monday. Sure. Dom, who you got? I also think Heretics is out. I think XL might also be out. Uh, I mean, BDS is playing better than them right now. Astralis mm. is is playing better than XL, and the last game is Koi. I just don't think XL is really not compelling. If if not them, I mean, the problem is that X, that Astralis picked up another win. So even if Astralis goes zero three, there's a chance that other teams go zero three and they end up not yep. making it. Um, I, I think Mad Lions are probably okay. Fnatic could easily just not make it right. Like if they just lose to Astralis G two and Mad, which they they all teams that look better than them so far, even though Matt hasn't looked the best, still think Matt has looked better than uh, Fnatic so far. I mean, I could see them uh, winning it out. I just think that, that Mad Lions players like are just able to win a best of one where Fnatic 
they've played one good game the entire time, even though they, they ended up winning two. I don't think the game versus Heretics where they get a massive lead early game and they just keep on throwing it. They only win because because <laughs> Evie is literally trying to lose. Anything like there's that was there's an no impressively one. terrible scion game. I have to yeah, say. I mean he he was actually doing like the boss scion minus like the farming and map pressure. He was just trying to lose the game. So the only game where Fnatic looked reasonable was this last one. I don't know if that's enough to just convince me that they're suddenly a good team now. You brought up a point earlier, Dom, about Evie. I know that every everyone kind of knows that every one of your least favorite players, you got your quote retweet in there, calling it out back in February. Why does Evie specifically frustrate you the most? No, know, knowing that there are a lot of players that int and collect paychecks, but why Evie? Well, I don't think that. So number one, I don't like when teams import weak players. Like I don't see that there's. I don't think there's any value in it. If you take somebody from your own region, obviously, like. The, the whole idea is that by that player existing within your region, even if they're improving and, and they're like not the best right now, they're making your region stronger. I think like hiring a mercenary that's not good, like just comes to your region, runs it down for like a split or two splits and then goes back. I don't think that that elevates the level of, of the region itself. So I, I don't like that conceptually. Also, I just don't think that he uh, fills the role that, that you're being sold here, which is the, the reason why, I mean, I asked Peter Dunn directly, the, the reason why that, uh, they they decided to import like Evie and Ruby are because they're veteran players. So they're veteran players to like help the rookies get better. But I don't think Evie does anything that allows Jack to grow as a player. I don't think he does anything that allows Mursa to grow as a player. It's like maybe you could do some weird logic where it's like, well, he's just since he's doing the wrong thing all the time. If you just think about the inverse of what he's doing, then that's the right thing. Like maybe you could go for some crazy ass <laughs> logic like that. But there's almost nothing that I that I, I like about his gameplay. I don't think he weak sides well. I think his his strongest part of his game is probably his lane phase. Like, I think that 1v1 laning he's fine with, but he looks completely unaware of everything else that's happening on the map. His TP use is just terrible. His team fighting is terrible. He doesn't know how to front line. He doesn't play on a tether with his AD carry. Um, or, and his mid laner, I don't know. I just think, I think he's actually just the worst player in the league. I think what's hard about Evi is what made him exciting and interesting at the international level was because he would play aggressively and get these solo kills and have kind of a weird champion pool. So he was, he was a bit of a wild card, right? But the problem is, is that when he's not, when you play against him regularly and when everyone's scrimming against him, he becomes, I feel, I feel like he gets found out by the players within his league uh, who are, I think, just objectively better than him and in, in the top lane in many cases. And as a tool, I don't really know how you use him because we've seen every facet of Evie as they try and figure out how to slot him into this lineup. We've seen the he gets fed on Trindamir but over pushes and dies and then they lose the game. So you can't play around him as a carry. His tank play is really lackluster, especially when it comes to his decision making. Uh, his his engagements, the way he's team fighting right now. So you can't really count on that either. So I don't know what the effective way in a professional team-based game of League of Legends to utilize Evi is because it, it seems like they've tried to activate his strengths and he pushes it too far and they can't get a win. And then he also can't play weak side or more standard stuff and get a win either. So I don't know what you do with him at this point. It's kind of a sad situation. All right. Uh, if you're an uh, Evy fan, LJL fan, or Nymera, just erase the last three minutes of conversation here. Sorry, friends. Uh, I mean, I was, I was excited about Evy because I thought it might be, I thought it was an interesting experiment. And you yeah. didn't know how good he was going to get by being in a more competitive practice environment. So I, just I don't, don't blame think that that's him. A point. I don't think that that's a thing when somebody's like so rooted in their own ways. Like you've played for what, like that's 10 fair. years or something in, in a minor region. You know how hard it is to like retrain yourself, even if you're experiencing different things, to retrain yourself to like have different well, responses to the especially game. Especially with so like, hard to uh, just be, you know, language difficulties and everything like that. Too. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is like language difficulties. I mean, he doesn't know what to do. Like he's not, he doesn't, he doesn't like if you watch him play. He screams, right? <laughs> He doesn't actually move his camera around. He doesn't know what's happening in a lot of the games. Like he, he it's just like he's playing almost lock screen. He he doesn't know what what's going on. So like maybe language barrier could compensate for that, but like if you have bad camera control, how are you going to like perform on stage when, you know, other teams are just like more coordinated? You look at the other top laners and somebody like Irrelevant for example, who's in his second split of, of well technically third, but it's in the second like half year of LEC season is yeah, it's in his first 
calendar year of playing LEC. I think he's infinitely better already as like a team fighter, understanding where to TP, how to play side lane, like all these types of things. And yeah, I mean, I think it's easier to teach a new player who's learning the game or like learning how to play at the professional level new things than teach an older player who's like very rooted in what they've they think is is correct. Uh, eight years. Eight years, I guess you could say at the top level with seventh heaven, but uh, yeah. it, it's a lot. It's, of, it's hard. To, it's hard to argue learn. that. I think I was I was optimistic uh, because I would have liked to have seen it work, but it does seem that it's a big problem because you just can't integrate into this team, and he, you can't create a game plan that makes sense around him. And I think that's just where we're at. Those were our thoughts here on the LEC. Two weeks into the regular season, one more to go to figure out who makes it into the group stages and who is part of those two teams that embarrassingly don't make it to playoffs. Uh, Mad Lions, again, all those championship points for MSI might go to waste here if they don't make it on out. Uh, all right, so our well, first big... what You and I have a different take on go to waste. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say are rightfully stripped. <laughs> okay, okay, fair, fair. I guess they also set themselves up for, for summer playoffs as well, the championship at the at the very end. It's just you miss out on the opportunity to go to MSI. Um, well, I don't want to see them at MSI, so it's not a bummer for Monty. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. You know what's cool? Well, Last Free Nation is pretty cool, and Power Spike is definitely cool. But the coolest thing on this show is actually the smoke coming from your freeze pipe. That's right. You pop one of these glycerin chambers into your freezer for up to an hour. Then you go ahead and take a hit. And man, it's going to cool it by over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that you won't be scorching the back of your throat, coughing up a lung, or any unpleasant experience. This glycerin chamber is from the Bong XL, and you can get it right now at www.thefreezepipe.com. And if you go there and use your code LFN, that's LFN for Last Free Nation, you can get 10% off your entire order. Now, it may be a Bong XL. It may be a pipe, it may be a dab rig or a bubbler. These are all the options you have for you. And a supporting freeze pipe will also support us here at Last Free Nation. So thanks a lot to those of you guys who have currently enjoyed those products. And if you're thinking about an upgrade to your glass before you hit 420, well, now's a great time to do it. Thanks a lot to freeze pipe. Uh, next up, our big topic of the week, the Galaxy Brain Club. Goes to North America. We spent a lot of time talking about LPL, LCK. We love pandering to our LEC fanaticators. But now we're back in North America for our main topic. It's the LCF playoff, LCS playoffs in the final week uh, that was last week, week number eight, on which teams made it on through. So let's get to it. Well, we have our top six teams, but there were battles all across the uh, top eight. Sorry, Immortals and Dignitas. Uh, for that first place spot, if it was going to be Cloud9, if it was going to be FlyQuest, and then was TSM still in? Was TLCK going to make a late run? 100 Thieves rode the rocket all the way to the top with the faithful going to be rewarded. It was an exciting like final week of, of LCS in terms of storylines and then uh, uh, much to the chagrin of Monty. Hundred Thieves, the hottest right. team in the right, LCS. Get out, get out. Right, here's my rant. Here's a, just shut up. Okay. So here's the thing. Hundred Thieves has actually just turned into 2020 TSM. If you haven't noticed <laughs> that, that's they've <laughs> they've they've actually just forced Double Left and Beer have forced their teammates to just become the same iteration of TSM that won 06 of Worlds. Their style is stupid and disgusting. Tenacity spent okay. an entire... It is. It spent an entire week just playing Scion and Gragas, and they lose the early game. They dig themselves into a 1-3k to 3K gold hole every single time. Uh, they lose bot lane. And then what happens is they do the old 2020 TSM special, which always works in NA for some reason, because this region is bad, which is that they start to group as five on objectives and they just death ball around the map and wait for people to int into them and make mistakes. And then they win a game. I hate watching this. And then now we have Bjergsen on like Annie and Lissandra, and it's just hard engage front to back. Tenacity's a bitch on tank duty. Peel for double lift every single team fight. So he does 
33% of his team's damage after 15 minutes. This team sucks to watch. And I watched game, like I watched their CLG game where CLG just they like Hunter Thieves is just five manning a herald, and then they have Dokla splitting bot lane with Yone. And Poom just like walks into all five and then dies and then Dokla dies in the bot side instead of just give up the fucking Herald and let Dokla push to a tier two turret. Like delay the backs, do something. Like nobody in NA knows how to split push. Nobody knows how to convert leads because someone is always in the wrong spot on the map. So you can have a gold lead, but it doesn't matter because there's a guy who's not there while you, they one person or two people walk into the 100 Thieves death ball. And this is how TSM won in 2020. It was the most infuriating playoff run where they had all of those game fives and the stupid zillion came out. And this play style will never work. It will get clapped internationally. You cannot lose early game this hard every fucking game because other teams will convert. They will know how to split push. They will know how to play side lanes. And you cannot do this against good teams. This team would get destroyed internationally. They are bad. Yeah, I, I mean, I I kind of I kind of like them to be honest. I'm the, of, <laughs> I'm the opposite of Monty because they prove what I'm like. They make me look smart. You know, they prove what I'm saying about about LCS to be correct. That you can draft, you draft badly, but if you draft something that's coherent enough, no one can punish the badness of your draft because the thing that exploits your draft is like really good laning, solid map play at all points poke control, poking before fights, getting on objectives first. Like you just have to be like a professional team and LCS teams don't play professional league. They don't play. I know, it's so terrible. They don't play. I watch LCS for you guys this week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't play the same stuff. Like even when you look at bad teams in other regions, they're Drake, like KDF, I think is better Drake setups than any team in NF than, than any team in NA. When I see them actually like playing it around with the TV max difference, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but they like get to the objective first. <laughs> they know what places to control, and even though they are like bad, or they're like not as good as other LCK teams, you can see what their intent is. Where like NA teams, they don't know how to play around objectives. If you look at just for example the games where uh, like people are playing Caitlyn, they don't even know the basics of how to get through a, a Caitlyn lane. Other regions, go look around the world. Go look at like week one, week two of like LPL and LCK. Caitlyn Lanes learned already that they need to ward level two. They're like, okay, if they burn our sums, we can't play the same way that yep. we want to play. We can't dry yep. up the turret, poke them out, and just take I think, place in front of them. Teams knew I think to play did that. an actually pretty good job of playing Caitlyn Lux this past week, but it didn't matter because they they also just threw into 100 Thieves. But, I mean, they, they, they literally fucked up exactly what I'm talking about. They just died level two. They died level two and lost their sums, and then they got it back because 100 Thieves is also not good at laning, but... <laughs> They could have just <laughs> they could have just overpowered them the entire time. The thing about Caitlyn Lux is if you get in the right situation, you just you literally just take the turret at like 10 minutes. You just start poking under turret. They can never I take mean, a good base. To be, to be fair, horrible. they did actually they did actually end up doing that. And they, they did have to stabilize with what a Jojo Pian uh, Vagar yeah. Rome. But yes, yeah. I see what you're saying. They yeah, did, but they, they did stabilize it though. But I mean they they start by giving the enemy team like two extra yeah, yeah, kills yeah. where if you play that way and you don't randomly die you don't randomly die to to the viego gank that you know is coming you can just ward to avoid it the thing about bot lane is you have enough wards amongst those two people especially with the nerf to red trinket where people aren't like basing level one and getting red trinket that much anymore um yep. because they, they nerf the timer on it you can't drop a ward get a red trinket and then sweep their level one ward anymore and people are taking yellow trinkets you can swap you can just have your lane perma warded and you can play around timings where your jungler plays on the same side of the map as you and you just go and you hit their turret when your jungler is there there's like no fucking counterplay because there's no it is, TPs it is a very transparent you. it is a very transparent thing to do in lane unless the enemy has like karma ezreal and then it becomes a little weirder but for the most yeah, part but, i agree in most matchups caitlin lux is very easy to know what they're going to do i mean the point is that you're not even having to like blind the caitlin lux and have them counterpick you and then you still try to execute it the other teams are just blinding zyra Khan. you blame you blind zyra Khan, <laughs> yeah. and there's and people can pick caitlin lux into the zyra Khan, and the caitlin lux will never be stable enough to be two and you just look at fights right like how does caitlin want to, to set up fights you want to be first on the objective you want to trap off certain entrances and then it's so hard for the enemy team to walk in because they want like somebody's gonna have to tank a trap they get fucking headshot or like 
you know, they try to walk through a choke, you get poked from a million range, you take a Caitlyn R, like it's so annoying to play against Caitlyn. But people are not good enough at, 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 at you know, executing this in North America because they'll always make mistakes. So I love seeing 100 Thieves just be, just pick the champions that I think will always work and it just, and see that even if you have bad lane phase, even if you're, you, you have like maybe, maybe you have one player in the league that's top three in their role in closer. I don't think anyone else is actually top three, even though right now, I mean, obviously since they finished third, you can make an argument for them because they're looking better as a team. They have one player that's top three, but because they draft in a North American way, they're able to just win games. It's just painful, man. It's just painful because the flaws in the gameplay are so evident and you just know, like perhaps I don't know. You know, we don't know what happened behind the scenes with the coaching staff, but it feels like when case left, it, it wasn't that nuke duck became coach. It was that Bjergsen became coach and they just reverted back and they just took a time warp to three years ago. And we were back on the same like bullshit TSM was on when double lift and Bjergsen were, were, was there. And you know what? It won NA. Like, I can't argue with you, Dom, about its effectiveness in North America, but I'm just so sick of seeing this same bullshit work. It's, it's, it hurts. Like, I want this region to be better. I don't want them to play like this. I would rather have a team like CLG play out the split push properly and just fucking win the game. Year of the duck, man. You can't stop them. And honestly, that makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, when I had the opportunity to interview Nuke Duck, it really feels like he's just accentuating what the players want rather yep. than Cass. It's not a coincidence. It. It's not a coincidence that this looks exactly the same. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if I blame Nuke Duck for it. I mean, even if he decided on this, it's just you pick what's going to win the games instead of trying to like get people to do stuff that they can't do, right? If you don't know how to split push, it's way harder at that point. When you're when you're five and eight, you, you take over the fucking team is five and eight. Yep. No, it's I agree. Time to win. It's it's way harder to be like, okay, this is how you play out like a pressure laning phase comp. This is how you hold chokes. It's way easier to be like, okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick champions that have kill buttons, and then when the other team is inting, because you know you're pro players, you know when when somebody else is inting, when you see them inting, you just kill the fucking guy that's inting. It's so much easier to play like that. Yep. The the other person that kind of reminded me with that terminology was who he. He was like, hey, Sticks A, what Prince is doing to us is so illegal. We need to be able to punish him. And I think that was part of the resurgence there for Stixay. Now imagine that across a whole squad with 100 Thieves, except maybe Closer. Closer probably already knew. He's like, all right, get me off of fucking Sejuani duty. <laughs> Let me play, make please. Uh, so 100 Thieves find their way on up. I was looking at the Caitlyn picks and bans. The only one that had Caitlyn consistently banned against them was Prince and Stixay. Those were the only two. A lot of the time, Caitlyn just went unpicked and unbanned. Uh, just a hesitancy. I what, think, a, what an outrageous re region NA is. And also yeah. China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Caitlin falls through the LPL draft quite a lot, too. Um, yeah. Definitely. But, uh, but that's yeah, for I, different I, reasons. I, and here's the thing, guys. As we as we transition this conversation into talking about the playoffs, I think Under Thieves might actually beat FlyQuest. I don't. I I, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. It's possible. I mean, but I, mean I, I, hope I, like I hope I'm wrong, but see, the problem with FlyQuest is it's not that they also haven't been getting a lot of advantages in the early game, and they power up into the mid and late game, which makes me concerned for this team because Vikla hasn't looked particularly strong uh, in at least the early parts of the laning phase. So they're not even able... Like, 100 Thieves is winning from deficits, right? So it comes... Again, not because they should be winning, but because of mistakes usually that the other teams make in terms of macro when 100 Thieves just tends to be grouped. And FlyQuest might also do that. I don't think this is a you know an airtight scenario with FlyQuest's recent play. Yeah, I think the problem with uh, 100 Thieves versus FlyQuest is part of the reason why 100 Thieves has been succeeding so hard or succeeding so much is because of the way that other teams are responding to what they want to draft. Like that somehow teams have decided that we need to ban out three double if champions, because that's like the issue where my read on things is actually the opposite where double if is going to be good in team fights. Like, I mean, so maybe he won't be good in team fights so for some of the split. He was just running it down in team fights, but we'll pretend that doesn't happen because people don't like talking about anything negative that double if does. So Let's say he's just playing really well in team fights the whole split. He's really and I'll just the be delusional. one of North America, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's literally just impossible to like. So I'm just going to lie. They've been playing perfectly in team fights all split. Perfect. 
even if Doublelift is playing perfectly in team fights every split, the laning is still the weakness, and the person who's the best player on the team is closer, and they're winning with three champions in the jungle. One of them is disabled by Riot Games, which has already hit 100 Thieves, right? Viego is disabled. So now, you've got Lee Sin and Wukong, the two champions that they're able to win with. I would target those champions. I would target Rakan. I would target potentially even Scion for Tenacity. I would target the Annie mid for Bjergsen. I would target like almost any of these champions over targeting double of three ADs because it's not like Jinx is like in the Jinx game, the Jinx got super far ahead and the whole team is just suiciding to kill the Jinx. The Jinx dies first, doesn't get any damage off at all. And 100 Thieves is still able to win the fight. I don't understand why we need to ban out double of champions. Yeah, I mean, so we go with the two bands there and then maybe Annie. Or maybe Rakan, and then you just go with the uh, Caitlyn. Force the Caitlyn ban out of uh, 100 Thieves. Let's see what happens there with FlyQuest. I do want to bring up the uncomfortable, unfortunate... I guess we could call this like a Drew Bledsoe situation. Ayla gets screwed over by Visa. Winsome and Prince are the oh, best I thought you were gonna say, North uh, It's time to put Unforgiven in for a double lift. That's what no, I, no, I, that's no, I thought no. you were going. <laughs> Not that one. I, I think it. I think it feels worse with like Ayla being a good guy and things out of his own control. You know, slowing down his progress. But Prince looks worse with Ayla than he did with Winsome. Is there an opportunity here for them to put in Winsome and let him let him roll because he cooked this week in the Academy League as well? Like. It just feels like it feels like they're trying to do the nice guy thing, the fly quest nice guy thing, compared to just letting the best players play. What do you think here, Monty? I can only assume that they actually have scrim data that backs up the decisions that they're making. Um, it, it did seem that Winston was playing better, but also Prince was playing better in the earlier parts of the split. I, I think he's been pretty cocky in terms of his lane positioning and you know i i look at that team liquid game he played last week and it just seemed very disrespectful so i'm not entirely sure this is an ala problem in and of itself versus just a prince's board or prince's playing worse problem right, ala is not playing well he is not good which sucks i mean what sucks is a lot of the the players that came from that team liquid academy team that was super hyped up Harry, Yeon, and Ayla, none of them look good. They look like the players that work in Academy, but when you bring them to LCS, they just can't mechanically perform on the same level. They're just not good enough individual players, which is rough because I don't know what you do when that happens. Like, you can't send them to Academy because they're dominating Academy, but in LCS, it doesn't even look like they're really improving as time goes on. I'd give Yeon. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd defend Yeon a little bit there. I think that he's had winning plays. He's had losing plays, but he's had the most winning plays out of these three guys. I mean, maybe. All right. <laughs> like he's just been aberrant. I don't know. Uh, I, I may, maybe I have to rewatch the game closer. I just I just remember him just not dealing damage. Like he just doesn't deal damage like a AD carry is supposed to. Um, But at the same time, it's like even if Ayla plays, I think FlyQuest should just be good enough to beat 100 Thieves. Also, like they too owed them. And even once FlyQuest started looking bad, they still were able to beat 100 Thieves. I think that the player diff is actually huge here. Like FlyQuest has player advantage in every lane. Also, they have a better player yeah, in every lane. Playoff, playoff impact always hits different. You know? Yeah, playoff hit, impact hits. Prince is fucking good. Vikla has been running it, but like Bjergsen has kind of been running it too. And I think it's pretty easy to get Vikla in situations. Honestly, if I was FlyQuest, I would just go back to playing like Jason nerfed Maokai and just ban out there, engage, and they'll probably just crumble in front of you. I just I don't really believe oh, in this hundred thieves uh, team. Take Lee Sin, ban Wu Kong and Annie and Lissandra. Boom, there's your draft. I would like to know what Bjergsen would actually do on some like non hard engage mid laners because he would also take play... Galio. I mean, he he would play Talia. He would play like Victor probably. and be okay. I feel like just. Maybe the Annie is good enough. Like, if he wants to play Lissandra into a bad Lissandra matchup, let him. Like, as long as the other parts aren't there, as long if they have Lissandra, but instead of closer playing Wukong or Lee Sin, he's playing Vi. I don't think you're close to scared about Hunter Thieves. If if closer has to like get in there and suicide to start a team fight, I'm not worried about the other players actually like being able to carry. I think the problem is that like 
they're almost using double lift as a bait in certain fights where like they'll split the map they'll put a lot of resources into double lift and double lift will be strong but then it's like closer is actually just killing everyone because he's on divine thunder super early as wukong and he's just like killing the majority of the people in the fight so i don't know i think you have to like you have to really restrict closer because he is the best player on this team and now he's not being restricted by his own team. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the meta changed and he's able to, I mean, he's able to play picks where he has more early game agency and he's showing it off. And also, I mean, Bjergsen has basically swapped to a more supportive style of mid lane. And that's also helping enable him. Let's uh, flip to the other series in the top side. We got to see a preview of it on um, uh, day three, probably... The biggest, the biggest upset of the weekend, right? I think CLG crushing Cloud9. Uh, definitely in terms of kills, not so much in terms of gold, but uh, Fudge was pretty miserable. Blabber had eight deaths in that one. Uh, I mean, what'd you face make of it? Is... <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was, he was struggling. He was, he was certainly struggling. I mean, I, I don't read too much into this match, especially when we actually did see Cloud9 defeat FlyQuest the very next day. I think FlyQuest is, or I mean Cloud9 rather, is probably the favorite to win the league overall. MNS is a player that has had really feast or famine games, in in my opinion. Um, and so that's I, I, that may hold them back in the playoffs if he hits a lot of famine games in a row. But Berserker has been really strong. I think when it comes to the regular season MVP, like him and Prince are probably leading the 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 pack for me. Um but yeah, I mean, I think Cloud9 works really well. I think this team is excellent at enabling Blabber. Uh, Blabber is still, I think, the most valuable North American player just because he doesn't take that import slot and he is pretty convincingly like the best jungler, I think, in the LCS. So his value is absolutely crazy. And we've seen Fudge step up m over the course of this split. It looks a lot better better than it he looks a lot better than he did in summer of last year after he had just made the swap back to top so feels like this team is coming together best of ones or best of ones clg has the ability to stomp games because their macro is simply better than a lot of the other teams in this league i think they made really big mistakes against 100 thieves but they don't always make those mistakes and that's what's been fun to, uh, about watching them play so they can snowball games if they get if they get good leads i don't trust clg clg had a 17 <laughs> kill lead and I looked at it, right? And I was like, so they're up 17 kills. So what, what's going on here? They're up 17 kills and they had a 5,000 gold lead. That is crazy. Like, <laughs> just, just do the math there, right? Like, what, what is 17 times 300? That's Bobby, the whole that, fucking gold lead. That's 5,100 gold. So the whole gold lead that'd be was without literally assist just well. kills. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I mean, without assist, too. Yeah. Without without assists, just pure kills. If those seventeen solo kills, and then obviously like you might lose something, but like they 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 were not even winning that hard considering they had a seventeen kill lead on Cloud Nine, and that was probably the worst Cloud Nine game that they've played. All, like they literally died to everything. Think about every single play, Steel G made that game. The level three Sejuani gank top on the Cho'Gath. Okay, that worked. Then he just walks straight mid, gets another one on Jace. Then they start making these bot plays with Scion ulti. Berserker is dying to every single one. Actually, every play CLG made worked. Worked the steal. <laughs> yeah, the steal. They stole Drake. Everything worked for CLG, and they still like were, were barely beating them. They they had points where they they could have lost that game. I think C9 completely obliterates them. Man, it, it is those types of games. That... I, I think I think C9 is the favorite to win. W okay, why why do you why do you phrase it that way, Monty? Are you the favorite to like... win LCS? Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I, I yeah, was yeah. like, yes, we know that they're the favorite to win against CLG, oh, but yes, why did yes, you phrase yes, it that In this way? game, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why I'm saying I don't, read in, I don't read into this too deeply, right? Okay. I think C9, over the last couple of weeks, has been convincingly the best team in the LCS. Yeah. One bad game doesn't change that. And, like, literally, when everything went bad... like, And then there's, way, there's easier ways to... They can adapt so easily. Like, maybe they just can't play Jace. Jimenez looked good on almost everything besides for the, the Jace pick. So <laughs> like, he, he ran it down both Jace games. Like just take yeah, Jimenez bad. off Jace and you win. It, it, it's, it's, 
I, I this kind of game is such a trap game to look into because it's not only that Cloud9 looked good, but it was like every play that CLG also or Cloud9 looked bad. It was CLG every play they made looked good. So it wasn't just Cloud9 throwing into them. It was contracts being proactive. These are the Juanito Arturo Garcia type games where he's like stealing shit and he's there for the counter gank and he's just showing up in your lane. You know, Fudge did the cast afterwards and was like having nightmares of Sejuani showing up in his lane. It's like those are the games that give CLG fans CLG faith. But uh, I think you guys have made really good points on that. The two other teams that snuck into playoffs, three game losing streaks, Monty, for both EG and Golden Guardians. What do you make of uh, both these squads and, and who has a better chance of finding form at the right time? I mean, EG's early game, I think, has still been all right. Uh, I, I've seen some tweets from people on the team that they haven't had a lot of practice. Like I, I actually just literally don't know what's been going on with them, like not being at the arena or Jojo Pian being sick. And like, so, I mean, it seems like from what the team is saying, that is actually really eaten into their practice time. And Jojo Pian has not been good in the last couple of weeks. Um, he's having those Niski moments where every advantage just turns into a disadvantage immediately afterwards. <laughs> and his positioning has been a little awkward in some of these team fights. He gets caught out. Um, he hasn't looked like the same player. And I would like to chalk that up just to being ill. Um, so I think that they've had some bad, uh, some bad results based off of their illness situation. That said, I don't really... I don't really understand why NA teams and evil geniuses in particular can't play Cassante properly in team fights. Like when I watch evil geniuses play, they just want to ram the Cassante straight into a five V five instead of having him pick off a, a, a carry or a, like a CC threat and then just zone them, basically just carry them over a wall and then just fight them in a one V one, which is how good teams team fight with Cassante. And we've seen it more effectively. If you are just going to, all out, you know, a player back into your team, which is typically how Sunday's been doing it, you're going to get a lot less value, especially since sometimes you actually enable the CC or the engage to occur that way. <laughs> so I, I, I like stop picking Cassante if you're going to do that would be one of my criticisms because they really just opted into that experience in the 100 Thieves game games, both of them, I believe. Um, so I, I think EG is okay, but they still have some conceptual flaws, and JoJo Pion's individual performance has been hit or miss. Don, what do you make of uh, these two squads? Uh, well, I don't know. I think I think EG will get it together. I I, I think that I'm scared for other teams, but I think EG will will be the ones that get it together. Like their players are fine. Obviously, they were sick. Um, they haven't been at the studio. So, like, apparently, I mean, I assume... It, um, is it... Did they say it was COVID? They, I think they, they were avoiding saying that it was COVID-related. Yeah. But. There was no official announcement from EG that it was uh, a any specific disease. But I think one of the players leaked it on an interview. I think it was tonight. Right, what else could it be, right? <laughs> what else is going to keep you out of the studio? Obviously. Yeah, I mean, the, like, I would just assume that it's, it's COVID, COVID or worse. So, if they haven't said it's worse, then I assume it's COVID. Yeah, I mean, maybe they could have Nuke Duck go and diagnose them. And if you know, you know. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Moving on. Um, they, I mean, they they obviously were sick. I still think that they're a better, like, team than what they showed. So, I I, I don't really take too much against it. Like, sure, they lost some, some best of ones. But if they're really pre prepping in a best of five, I think the loser... The losers of the um the fourth and, and third place, I mean, they'll probably end up playing CLG. I think C9 beats CLG. I think FlyQuest beats um FlyQuest. Uh yeah, FlyQuest will will beat Hunter Thieves. And then it doesn't even matter. Even Fly, FlyQuest Hunter Thieves doesn't matter. If CLG loses to C9, then EG will play uh versus uh CLG. I think EG is just a much better team. Obviously, they have some issues. They didn't play great when they played against CLG in both the, the two games. But it should be easy for them to just like figure it all out. You know, it, it feels like JoJo's having a very contracts like season 
you know, when JoJo's playing, because I saw one of the chat messages, JoJo's been looking bad all year. That's not true. JoJo had that Akali game that he hard carried where his team was in. I think FBI was the one that got caught and threw he the game and he had to back door. He completely fisted Vikla when Vikla was yeah. like shitting on everyone. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. JoJo has had some very high highs, best player in the league type thing. And he's had some massive stinkers where the rest of the team can't function or it is a 4v6 legit 4v6 by your mid laner and so this is kind of an interesting split in the very 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 young career of Jojo Pune here all right let's see okay Golden Guardians we didn't really touch on it Monty what are your thoughts on them I think it was always going to be difficult to win uh when you are so win in playoffs or like be a, a seriously competitive team when you're so focused around mid and jungle they're like lng light except lng actually has a serviceable top laner instead of licorice so it's like even harder <laughs> to hard carry this team than it is with with lng and I enjoyed that Stixay was performing better, but did we really believe that this was he had hit a new consistent plateau in terms of his performance? Feels like he's kind of turned back into a pumpkin at this point in time. But that's that's a comparison I would make is like this team felt like LNG, except a much worse version of it outside of the mid and and jungle duos. And I think it's very difficult. It's why we didn't believe LNG was as good as they are for a long time because it seemed suspect, right? It seemed very suspicious that they were doing as well as they did and they had a weaker strength of schedule. But now I think we see teams are much more able to dissect them. And if if either Gory or River have a bad game, then it tends to be over quite quickly. Tom, closing thoughts here on Golden Guardians? They're just bad. Like... <laughs> <laughs> River is not playing close to as good as he was before. I think Licorice is the worst top laner in the entire league. I'm trying to think. He's the worst yeah, no. player in the entire league. Yeah, he might now be the worst Bond's player gone. in the entire league. Now and then bot <laughs> I mean, bot lane was doing okay at a point and or like good at a point, and now they're just average. I think Stixa is mediocre in team fights. He's having a lot of like really weird games. I just don't see how they can beat. 100 Thieves, 100 Thieves, or, or FlyQuest. I mean, that's probably who they're playing, right? Like, I, I don't see how they could beat either of those teams. It seems almost impossible. A uh, couple more quick hits here before I have a closing point for uh, LCS. TL and TSM, they're out, Monty. Uh, maybe not the teams that we oh, thought, no. but how do you encapsulate their uh, seasons here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad TL is out, man. Holy moly! This team How do you fix them? Miserable. Well, I mean, their mid lane is just a giant black hole. Why would you import Pioshik? This was all, these were all the questions we had at the start of this split. It's like why, why Pioshik? Because because they're they're just they just idolize Koreans. Like you, you think you're the Korean fellatio enthusiast? <laughs> I do. <laughs> You, I like the, I like the good Korean dick, man. Not this like B tier dick. Yeah, but that's how, that's how you like. Pl, like look, this is a different dick. Look, you like, you like you like the good dick, but who's the real Korean fellatio enthusiast? It's the person that's willing to like that like get the up in dick. the STD written dick. And, <laughs> oh yeah, my god, they'll get, they'll get the worst. Dick. Like they're in it for the love of the game, Monty. They All love right. the fellatio itself. <laughs> and that's and that's what what breeds this type of team environment. Thank you. I, I realize now that I just like the quality, not the act. I should fall in love with the act, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you, it is what it is. Monty. It's, 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 it's easy to get. To get confused. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Korean enthusiast. They're a fellatio enthusiast. I, <laughs> not I, not I, the same. Thank you. That's a very important distinction. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean. There were so many question marks around this team coming in. I think the best thing they can do is offload Core JJ to somebody else. What, FlyQuest? FlyQuest, anybody? It seems <laughs> like if you can get rid of Core to FlyQuest, that that might be a very meaningful upgrade and a way to offload his, what I assume is a very expensive contract. Um, so I, I would like to see maybe some roster moves happen. Maybe you kind of cut back on TL, take, take the take the losses at this point, put the L back in TL, you know? 
Sheesh. Core yep. for uh, Winsome. There you go. That's not bad. They right? look back to Academy. Or, or how about we just give up on the... <laughs> Dude, Koreans are good at the game for other reasons besides for simply being Korean. <laughs> like, like, how about that? It's like this weird, like, just idolization. It's like, dude, they're Korean. Like, they gotta be better. It's like, what? I mean, the good ones are good. Like, the bad ones are, they're human beings. Like, what the fuck is going on with TL? It seems so strange that they just have this, like, I said it on Face Check. I'll, I'll say it here again. The big selling point of this roster was the worst part of the roster, which was that you had five Korean players, so they're all going to be able to perfectly communicate, which means that the synergy between them is going to be unmatched every other time that you have Koreans or come JJ to is gonna, grabbing... He's going to handhold these rookies through everything. His macro is going to win all the games. It's the same thing. It's, a, oh, well, now without a language barrier, they'll be able to operate on a perfect level. The problem is with other imports, they weren't able to, to, to perfectly be able to communicate the ideas that they had in game. So now with everyone speaking the same language, they can communicate naturally in their home language. Who the fuck cares? Like that, that is actually the worst part of their gameplay. They're better at lane phase when they're not interacting with each other at all than when they actually start grouping and trying to, to team fight and do things together and decide on how they want to take a fight. And they're trying to play together, play off each other and, you know, really come down to the details of fights and and exploit whatever the, the advantage of their team comp is over the other team. Like that is the worst part of their game. They go into team fights and they all are just doing different things and running around and inting like monkeys. Like there's no actual like cohesive unit that comes from the communication and them being on the same page. So I, I think the whole idea is just a failure. Well, they can end more clearly, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so at least you're not confused when somebody says I'm running you down. Everyone just understands it like immediately. They're like, okay, yeah, no, he is trying. He's just trying to lose. For a second there, I thought you know maybe he just made a mistake. Yeah, he, I mean this is this is a this is a very miserable roster. Um, the, the, the reason I, why I, I don't know you, is because the infrastructure is there. It's all Korean, right? The infrastructure is all Korean. So like, you I mean, can't, I think it was. It feels I think it was psychotic. I think it was psychotic to hire Marin as a first-time head coach when he hadn't even been around the professional game in a number of years. I think that is crazy. Didn't he like go to Korean military and then become a streamer? Yes, yes, that is what he did, and then he was hired as Team Liquid's head coach. Crazy. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I I just don't know what to say about this this roster construction. The combo of last year and this year, I do not understand how Team Liquid itself has not cleaned out the League of Legends team management because you now got two crack. You got a crack at last year's roster with a almost seven million dollar roster budget, and you completely failed. And you built the team around Western stars, and then you got a second crack at this roster to go 180 the other direction into picking up two, if you count Marin, three world champions and a Korean-speaking roster, and you failed there too. And this was supposed to be about your amateur talent that hasn't shown up. So, like, how do you survive? Like, how is how is their management just not fired? Serious question. Well, you need somebody to uh, translate when... <laughs> the organization can't actually <laughs> like communicate with the team at all. So I, I I don't understand how you can like this is this is a catastrophic job of GMing. All right. Well, I feel like I got some answers there on TL. Uh TSM, they fall a little bit short as well. Uh, you know, we found little blips of them looking really good. Maple had good games bad games chime i think was probably a bright spot on that roster and surprisingly with their uh playoff hopes on the line they swap out solo and put in hanser for the last little bit what did you make of this tsm roster closing out the season ah breaking news a blaze olive just retired yep i just saw that on twitter good for a blaze man started his career with tsm was the first draft pick i think in uh for by TSM for uh, scouting grounds. I remember because he was clearly the best player in that 2017 scouting grounds draft. And everyone was like, don't draft him. He's not going to sign with you unless it's TSM. And so he dropped all the way to TSM. I think they picked like eighth or ninth or something like that. Um, a, a long what happened career. To scouting grounds? Did they just completely do away with that shit. I think so. I think they moved oh. away from it. Okay. Yeah. You know, I got uh, denied scouting grounds. Uh, I wouldn't have went, but in 2018, like I, I was like, the fourth highest jungler on the ladder 
and I played one too many games of Graves, and there was like a one trick rule, and they listed me as a one trick and denied me from scouting grounds. Like, what world is that one trick? Like, I fucking played in LCS. Like, what do you mean I'm a one trick? They're like, yeah, you're a one trick. You can't join. The fuck? I got one trick. They said I was too much of a one trick, and it was on Graves. Like, you you think a 28 year old Graves player is going to be the problem? You think I'm too much of a Graves player to fucking be in scouting grounds? Like, I wouldn't have accepted it anyway because it would have been pretty fucked up. But like, like, I at least wanted to, you know, get the invite and do not and like post it on Twitter or some shit. Whatever. <laughs> Fine. I like how Dom gets spiteful about times where he couldn't be spiteful. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's real hating. Monty, have you seen my, my, my poster? Have you seen my poster? I, I, I see that. I see that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I live by. I, you know, some people like put motivational quotes. That's what I put. So every single day I wake up, I look at it and I feel ready to tackle the day <laughs> very good very good this is what the league community has done to him yep uh tsm uh, wait wait a blaze olive does anyone else find like i find it kind of sad that he like played for six years in academy right like he was in academy for six years like academy slash amateur or whatever i mean it was all kind of the same thing at a point six years and then he played two years of lcs and already retired like that feels so Sad because he grinded so hard especially, for it. In the especially now. because I think last year he was one of the more interesting mid laners. Um, yeah. And I thought he, I, I enjoyed his personality on the broadcast as well. I thought he, he brought, like, he had a good sense of humor. So I, I think it's a bummer, especially because he just randomly got subbed out for personal reasons. And then before we ever got to see him again, it's just like, well, I'm going to move on with my life right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. On, on that front, he 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 stepped down. He stepped down. Uh, oh yeah, hear that. he stepped down. And was like, hey, my heart's not anymore. It's not fair to the team. So yeah, he said was he, that really he was it? taking a break for yep. personal reasons. Yep, yep. yep oh, because yep, yep, yep. hard. I thought that it was just like personal reasons, like he was sick or something. I didn't know it was because he like. Yeah, that's yeah. a little bit you know of inside stuff there, and I think with with players like a Blaze, it's what do you do, right? What do you do? He's he's on the cusp and what he's going to mostly be remembered for in that golden guardian season is the Tom Kench pick and being able to play a little bit off meta E and catching people off guard and making it work. But well, he has some pretty high highs too. I mean, he, he was aggressive and when he would carry, he would often carry pretty hard. Yeah. I think when I think of blaze all, I think about like the rise, like triple kill, like the turnaround triple kill versus TL. That's good. Yeah. 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 That's, true. that's pretty That's pretty much true. my uh, blaze high highlight right there. Hmm. I think when I think of a blaze, I also think of Palafox. I think those are two guys that kind of came up together in that amateur system at the same time. And we've seen Palafox make strides and be able to play the mages up against some of the top players before in is in playoffs. I think it's just a tale of two different types of careers and one getting breaks. And I guess both have had tough spots, but you know, now it feels like Palafox was always in a better spot than what a blaze was able to find himself in. So I think it's just a bummer. Yeah. It's a bummer. Uh, as for TSM, as for yeah. TSM, obviously, like, I, I guess I'm a bit disappointed. I think perhaps at this point in time, I would like to see TSM in playoffs over maybe Golden Guardians, but they're the only team I think I would be more intrigued to say. And I think Maple and, and Boogie were interesting this split. I always love watching Maple play. I think Maple was one of the better mid laners. I think you could I think you might be able to make an argument that he was the best mid laner in LCS, actually, as crazy as that might sound, considering the, the position no. on the, the team. <laughs> his I, laning I think, is too look, bad. He's good in team fights and stuff, and he's good around objectives, but his laning is like. Not I'm just good. saying the mid lane hasn't been spectacular in LCS. Like, okay, let's play this game. Vikla has had some really big struggles in laning phase. Bjergsen hasn't been spectacular. Uh, I mean, Gory. I, mean, I, would take, Gory. I would still take Vikla over Maple if you look at the entirety of the season. Like, this I, think is, Maple, I, don't know. I think I, I think, think this Maple just like runs it like I mean he he does pretty bad in lane but then like out out of lane he's pretty good. Th this is a good transition into what I was closing out with. I, I just wanted us to quickly touch on Golden Guardians and and or sorry TSM and TL. But all pro voting is in. Monty, I don't think I've gotten your votes here. What do you got going up and down, up and down <sighs> the lanes? Uh, let me do this real quick. I was not prepared, so I'll probably fuck this up a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Top seems pretty clear cut. Fudge. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, Impact has done a lot with. I mean, he's been his traditional weak side self. Maybe Dokla, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think Dokla is defendable. Look yeah. at look at the lay. Look at the top leaders in LCS right now. You had you have Fudge Impact right, and then you have Licorice Revenge Summit Solo Armut Tenacity someday. <laughs> Dokla someday. It, like yeah. it is not a good role right now. Yep. Uh, yeah, jungle. I take. I take blabber. Mm -hmm. River inspired, probably. Whoa. Maybe okay, closer. That... Maybe Whoa. closer. Not Spica. Spica's not been not been impressing me recently. I, I will say, yeah, he did have a couple of tough games recently, but I feel like the body of work has been. Yeah. I mean, good. FlyQuest lost only four games. I don't know. I feel like FlyQuest players are getting underrated because of like recency That's bias. Fair. Like yeah. they're they were dominating the league early. Like they look like untouchable. Like everyone was winning. They had better oh, yeah, jungler, yeah. better mid, better like bot lane in, in every single game. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the closer one that's recency, you know, he was, he was pretty, sure, he was pretty bad. Muted. Really. And then uh, inspired has fallen off a little bit along with Jojo. I feel like that was unfortunate that Jojo's had a fall here, but inspired hasn't had as much to, to work with. I think. Yeah. But you could probably put him third. I think I put River third. I think I had Blabber, Blabber, Speaker, River. Uh, I, even though River, I, 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 I maybe put Speaker third then. But mm -hmm. I think I put River above Speaker for the whole the the totality of the season. God, mid lane is tough. Yeah, mid lane is mid -lane. really fucking hard. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, mid lane is really bad. Because like M and S has had up and down games, but he's also like played half a split, right? So yep. he kind of just gets thrown out. Yep, and. Everyone else. Vote for been... I, I think put you him can, third. right? With half. I, yes, you can. I put him third. I would. I mean, Gory's. Pro, I mean, I don't know. Gory, I guess, is first. I think. I think Gory has to be first. Yeah. yeah that, that that's probably the best way to word it. I was like, I have to put him first because. <laughs> that's probably weird as that sounds. <laughs> Maple third, maybe. I don't know. I I just wouldn't put Eminez in there because he he didn't play enough games. So I would just toss him out. So man, that's tough. If 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 you're tossing out MS, then I think there may be an argument for Maple, for Palafox, Vikla. Jojo was like such a lock in. I mean, I feel five, like Vikla just fell off. Honestly, yeah. I feel like Vikla is like better than all these motherfuckers, but like he just has <laughs> been playing like shit. But like when I like when I watch him play, like I think he's better. <laughs> I just think he's like inting, you know. Yeah, I, I know that. Like feeling. sometimes you watch people in, but you think you're like right, it's like I, Bo. I, like Bo's I'll go been Gory. Inting, I'll go Gory. Gory Vicla Maple. I guess it feels bad. It feels actually in insanely bad. But yeah, do do tired. eighty carry. I feel like eighty carry is like oh crazy. my god. End up with eighty carry is not bad until you get to three, and then you're like, what? Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> it's clearly like you know Prince Berserker, and then who is third? I would say Maybe. first. Yeah, Berser yeah, fine. Fine. I accept that. Um ooh, I guess it's like, do you value Stixay's earlier split performances over FBI would be the I'd still think I take FBI. Again, arguments for Luger to quietly put himself yeah. a, a good a good I split. Mean, Luger put fucking double lift in the dumpster when they played against each other in that last game. Do you guys remember that yeah. game? Mm -hmm. Or the not the one that for playoffs, obviously. The the not the tiebreak. I mean the one in regular season. Yeah, yeah. The Callista game where it was like four kills in like, like it was Callista into Caitlin Lux. A little crazy. Yeah, I went with uh Berserker, Prince, uh, and FBI. I think FBI. On the on on EG, I felt like FBI was one of the most consistent players, right? I think Inspired and JoJo were kind of he tied was. together. Vulcan, Vulcan as well. Uh, Vulcan and FBI were like really strong, and then someday had a, a good performance, you know. But I felt like he was the most consistent, which has been one of his hit knocks on him, right? It was like, okay, in the big moment, will he show up or will he not? He proved it in the past. He can. How much can you limit those bottom performances? And I thought he didn't really have too many like really bad performances this year. So I, I give him the nod. Mm. And then support. Yep. Vulcan. Ooh. Oh God, it gets 
<laughs> this dude, year's voting hard. was really fun, dude. It was really fun this year. This I feel like then, I, I think it's I think you probably have to put Sven number one. Like, yep. Sven had like a decent amount of like <sighs> good games. Yeah. I would put Vulcan above Sven. I'd say Vulcan Sven, but I, I don't even fucking know for number three, man. This is rough. Someone saying winsome still. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know for number three. I don't know. I mean, if you could put winsome, you probably have to put him. Like, I don't know if you're allowed to, but yeah, I mean, you probably have to put him. Man, and NA. Is, like low key. Yeah, everybody, goes. everybody was fucking hyping up NA, man. Everybody was hyping up NA this year that everything was gonna, you know, look so competitive. And like we can't even like all the players on an individual level have been like so underwhelming. It's very difficult to even decide who the best players are. Well, I think the parody is closer, right? I think you have like your top two there. And then it is competitive, Monty. It's just who's third. Uh, arguments for uh, who he, uh, Chime, and there was one more. Chime that... like ran it so fucking hard this week. My God, the fucking Rakan game. Jesus. <laughs> Dude, it's so hard to actually do. Like, all right, all I'm done. I'm done with this. <laughs> it's, it's like it's just painful to do all pro in an A. Like, yeah, think about is, the name. Okay, is, for support, this, you're this choosing like between torture, man. Busio's rookie split, Poom, Ignar slash Biofrost, who both were like sprinting it. Vulcan, okay. Sven, okay. Okay. Core JJ, who's having one of the worst splits of his entire career. Chime, who completely sprinted it. Flesh Shy, the Shy. But support for uh, Immortals Flesh Eye and who he like in Ayla. Like, I mean, it's just so crazy. It's so crazy what you're having to do here. I think who he's not bad. I went with Chime because I voted before the matches closed, but uh, or those last couple matches. But I think he had a good a good showing him and who he you could flip between the two. All right. Thank you for playing that game with me, Monty. I know I just put you on the spot there, and I've asked Tom like two weeks ago, uh, so I kind of knew. That's where been a hard going. game, man. This is it was a lot easier when I was doing like LCK, man. Holy yeah. shit, this is hard. Yeah. All right, let's uh, keep it up here with our LCS uh, ideas. With a visit to the future, Teller. We're here. It's time for Nostradamus. He's gonna give us some uh, uh, predictions here for the LCS playoffs. Let's hop to it. All right. Well, it's time. It's time to predict all of the the matches that we have here. I'm going to predict the first two matches, and I'll just predict the next two. Um, also, I think just in general, I think Hundred Thieves is going to look a lot weaker in this stage because teams are going to be able to prep for them, and I feel like what they're doing is very obvious. They're funneling a lot of things into the same style, but I think that it is counterable, especially when you have players of the caliber of FlyQuest. So I have FlyQuest beating Hundred Thieves, C9 beating CLG. Even though, like, C9 for CLG, last time they played in playoffs last summer, they actually went... It was pretty close. It looked like CLG actually could, like, could win, and people were doubting Cloud9, and then Cloud9 just blew everyone else out of the water. Um, so I have C9 winning, FlyQuest winning, and then dropping down, that will make an EG versus CLG matchup. I think EG smacks them. EG gets back on uh, the road, and 100 Thieves beats Golden Guardians. There we go. Those are the four matches, and obviously two of them... I mean, it could be different if, like, C9 loses or something, but those are, uh, yeah, th those are my predictions so far. Uh, All-knowing Nostradamus, if there was one team on upset alert, because it feels like there weren't many upsets there, which team would it be? Mm. I guess FlyQuest getting beat by 100 Thieves, if 100 Thieves is actually just the best team known to man with their drafts. Maybe FlyQuest is on upset alert. Monty, what do you think of these picks here by Nostradamus? I think it's probably correct. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, for once, we're doing Nostradamus where I'm actually predicting things and I'm not just leaking information like upset to vitality <laughs> or like, you know, day I'm getting kicked from Astralis where I just pretend like I'm just going into the future. What are you talking about? Because you're, just called called because you're Nostradamus, you're just leaking the future. That's what happens. Yeah. It's just <laughs> you have the preordained knowledge. And not it's because I know thing. the players that are telling me what the fuck is it's, happening. Yes. Yeah, but you're still leaking the future. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. It's Fair the enough. same. <laughs> <laughs> 
the shortest episode of Nostradamus. Thank you very much, Future Teller Dom. Uh, there's your playoff picks. Make sure to lock them in for uh, whatever you may use those uh, the, that future telling for. All right, next up, we got an episode or a segment of Keeper Kick. It's the 280 carries that have surprised us most in the West. It's Prince, who has had the probably the highest highs out of all 80 carries all year in the LCS, compared to the resurgence of the prodigal son. We'll say prodigal son, sure. Uh, upset, coming back on in. Who do you keep and who do you kick between Upset and Prince? All right, Monty. There it is. The question's there. Upset or Prince? <laughs> keep or kick? Uh, well, based on what I've seen from FlyQuest, I'm just going to kick Prince and keep Upset because I believe that this Vitality roster can actually potentially be competitive internationally, whereas I simply just don't have that same belief in FlyQuest's roster as we've seen it from the past couple of weeks i think that their weaker early game is spells very bad things for them and even though we're coming off of two vitality losses today this team has had a lot less time to gel and upset has been such a significant upgrade and i think that the the the, the ceiling of bow is very high even though he has been struggling in the second week of competition of the spring split of the lec so i would take upset because i think that I'm just going to pick the team that can do more damage internationally because that is my hope and that's what I actually care about, not necessarily the domestic performance. So if I had to keep one and kick one, I would keep upset. Dom, what you got here? Oh, I'm keeping upset 100%. Look, you've seen what NA has done to Prince over the course of just 18 games, 19 It was a skill, it was a skill of vampires, okay? Yeah, just imagine what he's going to look like by the end of the season. He's literally going to look like Stixie by the end of the season. It's going to be fun. <laughs> like, you're, it's it's going to be really tough to watch. So the skill vampires, they're, they're coming, and he just doesn't have the uh, the resistant gene that Impact has to the vampires. Yeah, do you, do, you, uh, do you guys remember when Obama finished his presidency? And, and they he looked did, like, like the before, years before and after before pictures and after. Oh my of gosh. Obama's presidency where he, he looked so youthful and vigorous before. And then by the end, he he was had so many wrinkles and he was so great. It had only been eight years. It was a really a shocking transformation. Well, yeah. that's what being the most powerful man in North America does. And Prince has been the most powerful man in North American League of Legends. So he's aging at a very rapid rate right now. So I agree with Dom. By the end of his North American tenure, he's going to be post-presidency yeah. Obama. Yeah, which is which is one of the things that we've adapted. Now our president is so old, you can't even tell when he's getting older. Our president is so washed, you can't even tell when he's more washed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to do it, to be honest. <laughs> that's, that's why we take only the most washed players in North America. They've been pre-washed for us. Pre-washed, they don't shrink anymore, right? There's no shrinkage with the pre-washed pros. We get Maple past his prime. You know exactly what you're getting. Yeah. If he does well, we're surprised. It's 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 good. It's the reversal of the expectations. Monty, I'm going to challenge you a little bit. You cheated, man. You're talking about the teams. I'm talking about the players. It's kind of like what we were saying before of, uh, what was it, keeper kick? Can I put, can I put Prince game. on a good Korean team again? You, why do you, you could put Prince from how you know him, right? Oh, what I like the one of the best comments that I liked so far was if it's a Western team, you keep upset. If it's a Korean team, you keep Prince. But that's that's not how we're doing it. I'm asking you if you had to pick I mean, between look, one I'm of these. I'm down two for the Prince to Vitality experiment. That sounds fun. That does sound fun, right? Upset to FlyQuest sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm just saying, see? <laughs> All right. But, I, I just wanted to point out, Doublelift actually just had an interview where he said that he is actually like the worst player to ban. He's like, I'll give you a freebie. It's really stupid to ban me out. So even Doublelift agrees. We just want to throw that one out there in into the <laughs> void. I know it's not part of the segment, but I just wanted to throw that one out there. That even Doublelift is like, this shit is fucking ridiculous. I'll let you guys like have this piece of information. God damn. Where did that come from? Was it because we were talking about uh No, I just saw it right old now there's old old presidents? No, I just saw it right now and I thought it was relevant to what we were we were talking about Tom's, earlier. Tom's reading social media headlines. I see. Well, <laughs> uh, it was a clip, but yeah, I listened to it. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Uh okay. 
This seems like upset supply. Sorry, Prince lovers. Uh, upset will prevail uh, in this part of keep or kick. All right, let's close it on out, guys. Uh, a palate cleanser for the ages. It's our certified <laughs> banger. It's the one that you all always come here for. You know, you watch Power Spike because you love Delicious League of Legends Pro Play, and we deliver generally from the Eastern region, but this time we're giving it to you all the way from EU West. That's right. Our certified banger of the week coming up. Let's take a look. Go ahead, Dom. This one's all you again. <laughs> well, here here is the, the the certified banger. So for this week's banger, I cho I chose uh, Heretics versus Fnatic. I everyone else wanted to do a good game. They wanted to do like Genji versus Dom one, something like that. Uh, I I decided on Heretics versus versus Fnatic. <laughs> this was a banger for the ages. Like this game was fucking crazy. I don't know what was happening where like somehow Heretics was behind, but it looked like they could win. And then Evie just started <laughs> trolling actually during the game. Like I, it's very rare where you can tell that a player is trolling, but I think 0, 11, and 5 is, is the point where we can be like, yeah, he's, he's just trolling <laughs> the game. So it was just was watching the way that he was dying on the Scion that was particularly, I, I have to hand it to him. It was a very inventive Scion game. I've never seen anything quite like it. Yeah, it was, it was game breaking. I mean, it was like he was learning how the Scion Q worked as the game went on. And he just uh, like he couldn't figure out that he could cancel it. So he would just walk up to the whole enemy team like no one would be in range to hit it all. And he would just start channeling the Q. You just see him just raising the axe. And then he would just fucking like die or like have to ult out or flash or something like that. It was just crazy to watch somebody actually go to this level to grief Yanko. So, I mean, I don't know what Yanko's did. I think I think what uh, Thorin said on Best Damn League Show is that maybe Evie is just like the biggest plumey stan, uh, who is the 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 cosplayer from Korea that like Yankos was like shipped with <laughs> by the community. Oh and, yeah, and Evie is just punishing Yankos for the fact <laughs> that Plumy is uh, preferring uh, the 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 Yankos uh, Nidalee to to uh, Evie. So it is what it is. <laughs> oh, that's so good because I was like, where have I heard that name before? And then. It was the Ashley Kang interview and that right. whole shit that they did. That's yep. that's a good deep cut. Um, Plus, it was a, it was a great match for Oscar and in the top lane prodigy to get his first LEC win. Yeah, not <laughs> not, not on moment. not on Monday. It was on Sunday. <laughs> it was a historic moment for the LEC, right? Um, Fnatic stopped their what was it like eight game loss streak heading into that something like that. I mean, it was a terrible game. But the thing is, is that when we discussed games of the the banger of the week, there actually weren't that many great games this week, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So we decided to do a shit one instead. And yeah. what, do you, what do you say about this game? It's terrible. Yeah, this game was, <laughs> but it was it was like next level terrible because then it looked like Fnatic wanted to lose. So it's very rare where two teams want to lose the same game. Normally, it's like one team wants to lose, and the other team just accepts getting a free what a win. Here, both teams tried to lose, but only one of them could. Next level. I, I love this. It's the certified hate banger of the week to uh, celebrate Dom's new sign. <laughs> <laughs> he got to do all three things during that game. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried North American fans. I tried to push for Team Liquid EG, but uh, that's okay. Team Liquid EG felt like watching a baby try to stand up for the first time. You know, it's like, all right, we're getting closer and closer. Core JJ is trying to utilize the legs and the arms just keep flailing around and falling over. It was just all like, right, it was like watching an American try to speak his first Korean sentence. That's what it was <laughs> like. <laughs> I, here's what I enjoy, guys. We're done with LCK regular season. We've got one more week of LPL regular season. Uh, the LEC should actually be kind of interesting this next weekend, and we're done with LCS regular season, so we are ejecting shitters, and we're close. We're so tantalizingly close to some really good playoffs in LPL and LCK, and also the delightful new MSI format, which is going to ac actually be fucking awesome. So I'm really hyped up about MSI, and I'm so glad that all of these kind of garbage matches are being slowly put in the rearview mirror. I, I I did think of a palate cleanser. Uh, if you want a game that is just you, you'll you'll notice greatness. Let's move over to the LCK and ju just watch just watch Caria on a support support. His thresh That's barely right. missed any hook 
Every death sentence. <laughs> Every death sentence landed. Wait, which series? Is that beautiful. the Dong Shim series? No, it's the uh, damn one. The damn one series. It was series. the Dom one series. It was crazy. Oh, I didn't it get to watch well. one yet. Yeah, it was he, very good. He landed every hook. It was it was pretty awesome. You know, we're like all like, one just doesn't match up well at all into like Gen GT one though. Like from previous well, series too. Yeah, the problem is that they played them both in the same week, which is challenging. But also because T one really showed how to beat D plus last week, which is like you just you you allow you allow Kana to exist in an isolated bubble with Zayas and Zayas just craps all over him. And then you just repeatedly dive the bot side. So Def can't oh, yeah. carry and then D plus can't win the game. So that, that, they, that first tower they, dive, they, they, they showed they, it off. <laughs> they, they just surrounded the tower. You knew what was coming and just a hook out of nowhere just hits Def and <laughs> yeah. Def was dead. Oh, that, oh wait, no, off. I did see that was like, but that's just Def trolling. Like Def got hit by a max range hook when they couldn't dive. Otherwise, like, I don't understand, dude, I I I can't, I can't when T1 plays on the cast, bro. I can't I can't <laughs> listen to it. It is just so crazy. They just are so, like, oh like, my god, the hook! It was so beautiful as the sky is the sun right on through, and there's the death sentence. Oh my god, it was it's just the like, greatest thing we've ever seen. <laughs> like, because I remember that. Now, now the game's coming back to it. That was like where they like were they they looked for the dive, and then they're just like kind of walking out, and then yep. like Kerry just like throws a hook. They're like, yeah, there's no shot that he gets hit by it, and then he just hits. <laughs> it's like, bro, we at least have to flash. Like, how are we just getting dry fucking hook there? Like, it's gotta be. You gotta put something on the hook. Like, they, I can't it just it can't just be that hook. God, I think what was, was more impressive was uh, Carrier's multiple hooks, including a blind hook and a mid lane skirmish on the mm -hmm. on the top side of the river. That was that was what stuck out to didn't me. Didn't he have from... a ward? Hmm? Didn't he have? Didn't he see the guy go into the bush? Or am I thinking of the wrong? Uh, he did, but it was a he had to predict where he was in the brush and the timing of it. So, but I mean that brush, it's like the banana brush, right? It's like pretty yep. like there's only one yep. angle he could hook at. I think. Let me see. Dude, there was another one. I'm where, giving like, credit to T1 Challenge Impossible. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like I just feel like giving them credit when they don't like when when you look at like when, what's happening. It's when, like, when give them credit give for them the credit, good Tom. stuff. I feel when like do you, they do enough do good stuff. <laughs> what? I said, when do you give them credit? Give give T1 some credit. Do it. Give Carrier the credit on Thrash. <laughs> uh, I mean, for, for me, I think the the best thing that I see them consistently do is their bot dives. Like, I think that that's that's something that that's very repeatable and you can tell that they have like yep. a very like practiced way of like okay we crash these waves we bring our jungler in our yep. mid here and then we just like yep. kill kill the ball i feel yep. like that is probably the best thing about their gameplay but it's like because that's like so systematic it's like hyped up less than what was the fucking play i saw this morning the vagar v, the vagar v2 play where they're like hyping up they were hyping up a vagar missing a cage <laughs> like unironically <laughs> this is what was going on hold on do we do we have the ability to show the clip? <laughs> no. <laughs> Unlucky. No. Unlucky. All right, Dom, where are we going with this? We okay, so this was All like right, one where like Vagar just misses a K like the guy is CC'd and you're playing against Nong Shim, right? And Vagar just misses the cage on somebody who's already CC'd, right? <laughs> Like the guy is CC'd, you can just put the cage and just like kill him guaranteed. But he just misses the cage, and then it was like somehow that was like a play where people were like, How does he live? It's like because the guy missed the fucking CC on him while he was CC. Like, I don't know, bro. It's just so weird. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we... great escape and Zeus ready for backup. <laughs> and then it's just like them just <laughs> missing CC on a guy that's CC'd. Wait, is that Are you getting that at Reddit again? Was this on Reddit? No, this was a uh, LCK. Uh, this is LCK Twitter. Here, I'll show you the oh, play, okay. Monty. Here, here it is. Look at this. <laughs> All right, I'll link it in Twitch chat for you guys. Like the guy gets gets uh, knocked up. He gets knocked up, and then he gets twenty ulted, and it's literally just a free Vagar cage. Yep. But he just misses, like, the guy is bubbled, too. So he has, like, a solid three seconds to put down the cage. And he just misses the cage on a CC target. <laughs> and then it was the great escape. Like, this, this is uh, this is the new call-up, right? Call me? Did he get yeah. called up? Yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah. replacement for Fiesta. Yeah. yeah. How about I mean, that? I, I, I couldn't Welcome to your first week. Go play against the GOAT. And he misses the... He, he, now he's getting flamed. We've talked about a lot of players... <laughs> 
And now you also get flamed by Dom. Welcome, welcome to professional league. Call me. <laughs> I mean, it, like I don't know, bro. Like just fucking. It just I obviously you could smart cast it in most situations. So either hit it when you smart cast it, or just put the little reticle up. I mean, this is something like Monty would be able to hit this cage. Like this is something. Oh my you can, god, that's yeah. that must be really easy. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> Mon Monty's thirty six. He can hit that cage. Like I, I also have. I, I'm thirty six, and I have feet for hands. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, true. And he could hit that cage. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, those were, I guess, th those were our certified bangers. That was our certified banger of the week. You got some palate cleanser if you want later on with uh, some carry a play. That's this week's episode. A long one there, diving into a lot of Western League of Legends. I know that a lot of the time we go into the LPL. What's the big match of the week here, Monty? Uh, we have four best of fives in LCK playoffs. Boom. What do you big. got uh, for us? I mean, the, the, the big ones are like, obviously, LEC is going to be very exciting because of how close the standings are. Uh, there's a first round of LCS playoffs, and then there's literally four best of fives. So you get to see all six of the LCK playoff teams competing. Mm -hmm. Now, I think many of those matches will be very one-sided, but it it we have we will have a lot to talk about next week. You think LPL KT's is a little shit on Sandbox? KT is going to turbo shit on Sandbox. Oh, this is this is it. Monty has now spoken it into existence. KT and expectations. <laughs> See if they can live up to it. Sandbox, <laughs> sandbox are frauds for sure. Yeah, they're really bad. <laughs> yeah, they're they're not actually a good team. I can't believe that this team. When I saw the roster list for LCK, I thought it was going to be a very clear top six, bottom four. I did not think it was going to be this top six and bottom four. I am surprised that DRX is just like worse than Sandbox. <laughs> I have decent margin, to be honest. Kind of crazy. But yeah, LPL. Uh, I mean, this is the last week before playoffs. Yeah. So very few of the matches actually matter. Yeah. Um, yeah LPL exactly. is like about seeding, right? So, I mean, RNG has to beat Rare Adam. If RNG doesn't beat Rare Adam after losing today to, to Ninjas in Pajamas, they're just not going to make it. Um... Today, like, I think the best matches are actually today because it's Weibo versus WE and Top Esports versus OMG. Um, Top Esports versus, versus OMG is really significant because the winner will skip the first round of playoffs. The winner will probably end up, almost guaranteed, will end up top six, which top six means that you you don't place into the first round. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's huge. And Top Esports has been, like, completely shitting the bed recently. So maybe OMG makes it out of the first round for the first time in, like, maybe, what, like, six years? Like, Four years, five years, something crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be doing much. Uh, L I'm not going to be watching much LPL on stream because I've got family visiting. And yeah, like the, the games just don't matter that much. Yeah, it's not very interesting. Four game losing streak for top esports. Yeah, and they're, they're having like yeah, drama too, right? Like they had uh, their coach who's been a coach for a while ended up getting like fired or he like stepped down. I'm not really sure exactly what the situation is, but you know, they started losing games and then their coach is no longer their coach and then they kept on losing games. It's not a fucking good look. All right. Well, we've got a lot of top end league action coming at you for the rest of the week and we will cover it all next week on this episode of Power or next episode of Power Spike. Make sure to like and subscribe over at our Last Free Nation. Shout outs to our editors who've been putting out a ton of short form content as well on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to see pop up on my feed every now and then and yeah, see how everyone's doing. So make sure to subscribe to those channels as well. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys next week for another episode of Power Spike. See ya.